This is go through for electric, electric circuits checkpoint one. Hopefully you've got this right, but if you haven't and you're watching this, okay, then hopefully you can pick out the bits where you've gone wrong, sort those out, not make the same mistakes again. Um, this is fairly straightforward, but there are many of the catches that might catch you out as you go through this course. So the sooner you can sort those sort of issues out, the better off we'll be. So we start off with a battery connected to a conductor. The current in the conductor is 40 milliamps and calculate the total charge that flows past the point in three minutes. OK, so we're looking for an equation that links charge, current and time. That equation is that equation is Q, the charge is current times time. Okay, seems fairly straightforward, but a couple of things to notice is 40 milliamps. The way we turn milliamps into amps is to multiply by 10 to the minus 3. That's the same thing as dividing by a thousand. Okay, but in your calculator that'll be much easier. So 40 times 10 to the minus 3 times the time, but we notice the time is in minutes and we do time in seconds. So that's 3 times 60. Okay, if you stick those numbers into your calculator, then if you've done it right, you will get 7.2 coulombs of charge. Okay, don't forget the units, coulombs, because we've just calculated charge. Okay, this one's a bit trickier, so we want to calculate the number of electrons, okay, when we that pass the point in this conductor in this time. Okay, so all it's saying is we've got 7.2 coulombs of charge. How many electrons was that? Here's our crucial piece of information. This is on the data sheet as well. The charge on one electron is 1 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Probably the easiest way to think about this is that the total charge will be the charge per electron times the number of electrons. OK, so if I wrote that as Q equals E times N, OK, then hopefully that way around the equation looks fairly easy to understand. We want this number N, so N equals Q over E. We've worked out Q above is 7.2. It tells us in the question that E is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Again, the ch the chances are that some of you will have gone wrong on just putting this number in your calculator. Okay, it's really important that you press 1.6 um, times 10 to the press the little minus button 19. If you put that in right, you won't need any brackets. But if you're unsure, you can always put this in brackets to make sure it's right. Please make sure you can get that right in your calculator. Cause it's going to come up over and over again. The answer comes to 4.5 times 10 to the 19. Okay, a little check for you. This is a very big number, obviously. This is a very big number of electrons because electrons don't carry very much charge each. Okay, our next one, we've got 8.6 joules of energy transferred to the conductor. Calculate the potential difference. Well, again, this is why it's called basic definitions because we need to understand that the voltage is the energy per unit charge. Okay, we've got here 8.6 joules, so this is just 8.6 joules divided by the charge, which we worked out back up here, was 7.6, sorry, 7.2 coulombs of charge. 8.6 divided by 7.2 comes to 1.19. Okay, and again, look, we're looking for potential difference, that's voltage. So we probably put our answer here to two significant figures, because that's what they're giving us in the question. 1.2 volts. Calculate the resistance, again, back to basic definitions resistance is voltage divided by current okay we've just worked out a voltage let's go back to 1.19 just to be safe when we're rounding off divided by the current we had that bug up here at the start so that's um, 40 times 10 to the minus 3 again be careful with your calculator so 40 times 10 to the minus 3 that gives us 29.9 .9. round that off let's call that 30 ohms to two significant figures. Question two, if anything, might be slightly easier actually. So um, we've got a steady current of 0.25 amps for six minutes. We want the charge. So this is the same as last question. Q equals IT. Current this time 0.25 amps. It's given to us. So no need for a conversion there. But six minutes, we've got to turn into seconds. So that's six times 60. 
Just put those numbers into your calculator and you'll find that that comes to 90 coulombs. Okay, again, don't forget the unit. Okay, second question. It's now connected to a battery of negligible internal resistance. Okay, forget this bit. We're going to come back to that soon. The battery supplies a steady current of 0.25 amps again, but this time for 20 hours. In this time, the energy transferred is 9 times 10 to the 4 joules. Calculate the potential difference across the bulb. Well, um, there's a few equations with potential difference in. Okay, but the one that relates to things we've got in this question is it's the energy per unit charge. So you try that one, you think, okay, energy, that's good, we've got energy in the question. But charge, that's not so good, we haven't been given the charge, but we can work it out in the same way as above. So they're giving you a little bit of a clue here where we're going. Uh, so the first thing we've got to do is Q equals IT, so 0.25 again, but this time times 20 times 60 times 60 again. Okay, again, be careful, this is hours, so that's turned into minutes, that's turned the minutes into seconds. When you do that, you get 18,000 coulombs. Okay, again, that's not the answer, but still put the units, making you think about what you're doing. You've worked out the charge here. This isn't the answer. The question's about potential difference. So then we need to do V equals E over Q. The energy's in the question, 9 times 10 to the 4 joules. The charge is 18,000. That gives us 5.0 to do it to two significant figures and volts. Just try to make a better decimal point than I have there. Okay, work out the power of the bulb. Okay, well, the first time I saw this question, whenever I think of power, I think of energy over time. So we've got power equals energy over time. Okay, well, the energy is, um, in the question again, 9 times 10 to the 4 joules. So we've got 9 times 10 to the 4 divided by the time, which was 20 hours. So 20 times 60 times 60. Stick that in a bracket when you're using your calculator. You'll find that comes to 1.25. It's a power, so it's in watts. Okay, if you're a bit cleverer than me, you might have thought of using P equals VI. Okay, the voltage is 5, the current's 0 0.25. Oddly enough, that also gives you 1.25 watts. Okay, so either of those methods is fine. Bottom one's a little bit simpler. Top one, at least to me, is a bit more obvious.